Hey, this is a special edition of Real Life, and uh, we are actually here on campus and uh, right in the middle of our Engage conference. And that's something you can check out later, and we hope to be bringing more of that to you. But uh, today, right now, before he has a chance to get up there and speak, we've got with us Frank Turek. And Frank Turek is a uh, a man that I feel very acquainted with, even though we've just met personally uh, a little while ago, Frank Turk is a guy that I visit often online, YouTube, watch his debates, listen to him, and he's debated some of the big hitters out there, including one of my favorite, if not my favorite, uh, atheist in the world, although sad to report, you know, Christopher Hitchens is in eternity today. But uh, Hitchens and Frank Turk debated one another. You can look at that, you can find that online. But Frank Turk comes to us uh, right now with a tremendous mind. I love the way he thinks. I love the way he argues. He's a Christian apologist. Doesn't mean he walks around apologizing for being a Christian. It means that he gives arguments for why he's a Christian. He uses his mind. He uses the very things that God has given him and you, mind you, but he does it to the glory of God. He exercises his logic and reason. And I hope that after our time together and you seeing him speak uh, on one of our Engage uh, uh, messages, that you'll see why it's important that you know what it is you believe in and how you can defend that. You know, without that as a Christian, what in the world are we doing? So how can you believe in something that you can't defend? How can you believe in something that you cannot define? So author of numerous books. One of them is, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. And uh, among others, he wrote a book, little tiny book, extremely powerful. In fact, I, I made it a uh, required reading here at the church. It's called Correct But Not Politically Correct. You've got to get your hands on that. So uh, you're welcome to jump in right now and join our uh, discussion together with Frank Turek. Frank, uh, so much is going on today, um, and it should be. Uh, the discussion, the argument, almost the redefining of uh, what the scripture says in church regarding the homosexual community and their perceived legalization of gay marriage. Mm -hmm. um, a lot's happening. What, and I know you've written on this, what do you see uh, the role of the church playing in light of kind of this new culture that we have that's been legalized? Well, I think the church really needs to, I think at, at this point, it, as you mentioned earlier, and we were talking off the air, right? Yeah. We were talking off the air, exactly. so these, you, these people out here don't really, aren't privy to our private that's conversations. Right. But you were saying, and I think you're right, of course, Pastor Jack, is that this is going to really, it's going to divide the true church from the church who aren't really committed, the folks yeah. who aren't really committed. And I think it's actually going to strengthen the true church exactly. in the long run. Exactly. In the long run, exactly. it will. I, I think there's, there's some disorientation right now. People are going, what do we do now? Do we have to uh, obey the law of the land in the sense that we actually have to condone these relationships now? I think obviously not, yeah, because exactly. we're to obey God Correct. rather than man. Amen. And we're not doing anybody any favors by condoning behavior that is harmful. Regardless of whether you believe the Bible or not, we're not doing anyone any, any favors. Okay, listen, what you just said makes pure sense to me. Mm -hmm. Let me argue with you. Okay. How is it? Oh, come on, Frank. Um, you're a Christian. You have to be loving, mm -hmm. and you've got to accept me as I am. Uh, my gay partner, now we're uh, husband and husband, or wife and wife, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, because it's a lot of land. Come mm -hmm. on, Frank, you've mm -hmm. got to step up now. You've got to receive me. You've okay. got to accept this. Well, my question is, one of the questions you always ask people when they say something, you're supposed to love. My first question is, what do you mean by love, Pastor Jack? Well, uh, Jesus was loving. Yeah, I want you to be like Jesus, you see. And, really? and he never said anything. Mm. Um, you can't find a verse in the New Testament where Jesus said, I'm against homosexuality. Sure you can. Wherever he said sexual immorality, and he said, talked about it quite a bit, that included any behavior outside of the marriage of a man and a woman, sexual activity 
inside the, the, the bonds of a holy matrimony between a man and a woman. Anytime he's talking about sexual morality, that's anything else, which includes, of course, homosexuality, adultery, bestiality, incest, yeah, whatever else right. you want to talk about. So he did, but that's look, right. even if he didn't, it's an argument from silence to say that mm -hmm. Jesus, therefore, was for it if he didn't talk about it. I mean, he didn't talk about incest either, but I don't think he was for it. The other aspect to this is, let's say Jesus said absolutely nothing about this, but he did. He did. Let's say he said absolutely nothing about it. Jesus, as the second person of the eternal trinity, That's right. inspired the entire Bible. Now you're, so now you're the talking. entire Bible is from Jesus, yeah. not just I love it. the red letters in the New That's Testament. Right. I love what Frank just said because, um, I mean, who am I to educate Frank Turek? But here's the deal. He just said it. Jesus did address it exactly, and this is how he did. If someone says homosexuality, in fact, let's just do this. You, you can't get a, give a free pass on homosexuality and then condemn an adulterer. They're both sin, the Bible says, right? Mm -hmm. So here's the deal. Oh, no, no, Jesus, Jesus didn't mention anything about it. No, I tell you what, he actually did better than that, and you touched on it. Jesus said that he came to fulfill all the law mm -hmm. and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is his statement saying, I've come to fulfill the entire word of God. Not one little Hebrew comma or hyphen will pass away till all these things be fulfilled because he is the fulfillment of the word. So, the, and plus you mentioned this, this awesome fact about him not only being the second person of the Trinity, but the fact in the book of Hebrews and Colossians where Jesus Christ is himself the creator, the designer, right? right? He's right. the engineer. Sure. Yeah. And he engineered human sexuality to produce little humans. And if evolution, this is kind of fun, I think. Gosh, <laughs> and if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. let me know. Mm -hmm. It's always been my thinking that if evolution is true. It's not. I know, but. Macroevolution. But for the sake well, of argument. But let's just play. Let's right, pretend. Right. I'll be Christopher Hitchens right now, and you can be Dawkins. British accent, go. I can't do a British <laughs> accent. <laughs> but, so. I'm defending evolution. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'd like to know where all my evolutionary brothers are at on this topic, because mm -hmm. here's my point. Mm -hmm. Again, it may be nuts because I'm borderline, okay? Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. If evolution's true, then why hasn't it, which is committed to the survival of the fittest, why hasn't evolution eradicated uh, homosexual practices? Because it's physically, and you point this out in your book, mm -hmm. uh, correct but not politically correct, it's physically destructive to the human body. I think the average age, age span of a career homosexual is 47 years. It something used like to be in the 40s, but since AIDS, AIDS is no longer a death sentence, it's, it's not as early okay, anymore. But it's it's not any, anywhere between 8 to 20 years earlier than a heterosexual. Than yes. Okay, good, good to know. Okay. So it's not healthy. So if evolution's true, um, why hasn't it eradicated mm -hmm. it? Uh, to me, that's an important question, and maybe I, I'm, I'm just seeing it only in my mind, but I don't have to show that homosexual practices is wrong from the Bible. I can show you scientifically. I, I can go to my doctor and he'll tell you it's destructive. Well, there's a natural law argument, which is the argument I try and make in the book, correct? Yes, Not you politically do. correct. Our founders called it crimes against nature yep. because they were politically incorrect and they realized that the anatomy of the man and the man or the woman and the woman just don't work. The plumbing yeah. just doesn't work yeah. and they knew there were negative consequences as a result of that. That's why they called it crimes against nature, natural that's right. law. That's you a do, fact. Yeah, you don't need the Bible to, to know it's wrong. In fact, the Bible even says so. Romans chapter 2, the Gentiles right. who do not have the law of the law written on their heart. And before there was ever a Bible, God condemned the Canaanites that's right. for these kinds of practices and others. They never had a Bible, but they knew basic right and wrong because it's written on the hearts of all people regardless of whether or not they have the scriptures. So basic right and wrong is known regardless of whether you have a Bible or not. Now we see this thing right here. It says faith in public policy. People yeah. will say, well, you know, you guys are Christians. You can't impose the Bible. We're not imposing the Bible. No, no. You, don't need to, you don't need to impose you the don't Bible. Have to. Because the same source that gives us the Bible is the same source that gives us the natural law <laughs> consistent with the Bible. Right on. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Um, okay, so here's the deal. I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with a guy by the name of Cy Rogers. Have you ever heard of Cy Rogers? I've heard the name, but I don't know who he is. He was, um, make a very long story short, he was a, a severely molested child. I say baby. I mean, uh -huh. he was molested by his mother's boyfriends. Uh, just a horrible upbringing and uh, went into the homosexual community. In fact, Cy Rogers 
uh, was the first scheduled hormone replacement sex change patient scheduled for, at Johns Hopkins University. Uh, and two weeks before that was supposed to happen, federal funding was blocked. And he didn't have that done. But he had gone through 14 months of hormone replacement. After that time, he wound up coming to the knowledge of Jesus. He got saved. And now he travels the world mm. speaking on this topic. And mm. We've had him here mm. uh, at, at the church I pastor, and he's, he's, he was amazing. Point is, Cy Rogers backs up what you just said a moment ago. He said even when he did not know God, he knew inside that what he was doing was wrong. Mm. Mm. But this is what he said. He said, but... We are people who want love. And he said, we are so desperate as humans for love that we will choose bad love over no love. Mm. And I thought that was profound. Yeah, yeah. And so having said that, let's kind of segue this way because they, they know what's wrong. So how do we reach them? How do we, how do we reach out to them? Because let's be honest, the moment, in fact, you and I just for doing this program right. are going to be haters. Right. We're gay bashers. Right. We're homophobic. And we've been called that so many times it doesn't even register in our radar anymore. Well, let me, let me go back to what you said earlier. Yeah. When you brought the scenario up, well, you have to love me. The question is, mm. what is love? What do you mean Good. by love, right? What, what does it mean? I mean, I have three kids. Yep. You have kids, right? Yep. Let me ask you this. If you tolerate everything your kid wants to do, are you a loving parent? Absolutely no, not. No. And the same thing is true in a public policy sense. That's right. You can't tolerate whatever anybody does and, and, and have that be good public policy. That's anarchy. That's right. So there are, there are boundaries that you need to put into place. Now the question is, we can argue what the boundaries are, but don't tell me that love always means approving what I do because it, it's not the case. Not in any context, no, no, is it? No. no, not ever. In yeah. fact, I had a pastor friend of mine in Charlotte who just did a message uh, similar to what you mm. did. Uh, on this issue right after the Supreme Court said, he just said, I just watched this yesterday, he said, where do we come off with the idea that love is all about feelings? Let oh, me exactly. tell you what love is. He said, <laughs> he said, my mother lost her mind to Alzheimer's. That's right. She didn't even know who my father was. Mm. And he would love her. He would take care of her. Clean she didn't know who he her. was. She, he did this for years That's out of love. That's love. That's it's love. not just associated with feelings. In fact, if it was associated with feelings, I know you and That's I know right. I, we'd have been divorced a hundred times. That's right. And my wife would have divorced me a thousand times That's because right. she doesn't like me more than I don't like her. It's That's not right. all about feelings. That's right. We're broken people yeah. and broken people need, need to make a commitment to one another regardless of whether they feel. And, and, and regardless of this argument about what homosexual uh, mm -hmm. conduct legal or not, this is true, uh, as you just said, in fact, uh, as friends. Yes. I mean, if a friend of mine, imagine uh, uh, my personal doctor, my MD is a friend. Uh -huh. He would not love me if I went to him and he, he found a lump on my neck or whatever and he fears that it's bad news. He's pretty sure it is, but he loves me. He doesn't want to hurt my feelings, so mm -hmm. he doesn't tell me the truth. Mm. He just actually grants me a premature death because he didn't right. want to hurt my feelings. Right, right. So, so how, do we reach, how do we reach someone who's caught up? Mm. They already know what they're doing is wrong. Mm. That's why they're so mm. defensive. Mm. How do we reach them? How do we talk to them? Well, I, I think one of the ways that you talk to them, I think you got to befriend people personally to do this, right on. is I think you need to talk about sin in general and say that we're all sinners and there's grace at the cross of Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm a sinner, you're a sinner. You, 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 yep. You've heard this before, evangelism is just one beggar showing another beggar I, where the food is. I heard you say that before and that right? is a great Well, word. I didn't make it up. I don't know where I got it. Yeah. But uh, I think that's just a if beautiful you say it way a few of more putting times, it. It's mine. Evangelism is just one beggar showing another beggar where food is, where the food is. That's me. No, I don't know where I heard that, Jack, yeah. but I think it's, it's perfect, right? It is perfect. That's the truth. So but good. we're not, it's false compassion to say, oh, you want to do this? I'm with you. I, oh, I, oh, I love yeah. you. I'm with you. It's true compassion to say, I love you so much that I'm going to risk you hating me yeah. because I, I, I know what you're, the road you're going down. Listen, I recently did bad. a message uh, here at the church. Mm -hmm. It was the Sunday after that uh, Supreme Court decision. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I said what you just said at the end. I said that we need to hold our ground biblically because it's the Bible. It's the immovable, ain't going anywhere truth of God. And you're going to be really tempted, I told the people, to back down, acquiesce, kind of 
kind of get off of the biblical truth because your emotions are going to be mm. raging to pat somebody on the back. And I said, don't do that because the school, the public sector of uh, education, uh, public square is saying, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. No, no, they're saying, you must celebrate, you must celebrate, you oh, must celebrate. True. It's beyond even, it's okay. You're right. This is not tolerance. In this fact, is, you see it our way or we will hurt you. That is true. So that goes the way that you and I, we know it's going to go. But you know what? If we don't hold our ground biblically with truth and love, mm -hmm. in five years, Frank, when these two people who happen to be 19 or 21 or 25 who are all nice and firm and cute looking, you know what? People get old. Even homosexuals get old. And the honeymoon wears off. The fact that it's legal, which mm -hmm. by the way, everybody, marriage is not legal because God's law trumps human law. There's no civil court in this world that can trump God's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, God's creation mm -hmm, of marriage. But mm -hmm. be that as it may, there's going to be a day when you are tired, you're sick, your body now is not what it used to be. You're going to look around and you're going to say, you know what, all of this uh, raging sex that we've been having ain't what it used to be. Mm. And uh, It's I'm, not going to bring ultimate fulfillment. No way. Even, even the best oh. marriages don't bring ultimate fulfillment. I tell because you. Because the, the marriage is an illustration of our union with Christ. Yep. And so even, even, even the best heterosexual marriages don't. You know why? Because Be we're, we're so broken. We're so yeah. broken, yeah. but here's the deal. A lot of people don't like to hear this. What? Uh, God's the inventor of marriage. He created it. And a lot of people today in our Western world, they say things like, oh, I can't live without you. You're amazing. Will you marry me? Yeah. Anybody tells you they can't live without you, will yeah. you marry me? No. That's the last person on earth to marry. Because right. they're actually saying, will you be my slave? Because I just really yeah. want to have a lot of fun with you. And you, you're, you, know, you were designed to make me happy. No, marriage was created by God to make you holy. That's it's right. a ministry. That's right. It's exactly. not to make you happy. Doesn't that sound mean? Yeah. It, listen, there's fulfillment, but it was to make you holy. Like Jesus makes his church holy as we serve him in obedience. And so, yeah. But... Um, I'm thinking this. You mentioned the word friendship, mm -hmm. uh, befriend uh, a, a yeah, person sure. that's confused. Um, it has already started in a more intense way since the Supreme Court made their decision here at this church and in my life personally. Because uh, people will come to me, and they have been coming to me, in the foyer uh, at Home Depot. Mm -hmm. Pastor, my son just found out the other day at school that he's uh, a homosexual. We really? found out. Oh. Really? Mm -hmm. How'd that happen? Yeah. Well, the teacher said in the class uh, of these sixth graders that, have you ever had a thought uh, about what it might be like to touch this or that or to see this or that? If you, if you have, you're gay. Wow. So the kid came home and said, gosh, mom and dad, I guess I'm gay. Wow. And I said, go home and tell your son or bring him here. I'll tell him for, for mm. you. He's not gay. Mm. He's not gay. A lot of people are being told right now that they're gay. This is going to sound extreme, but I think it's true. Nobody's homosexual or heterosexual. We're male and female, and what we decide to do sexually mm -hmm. is always a choice. We may have, we may have uh, attractions that we don't know where they come from, but our attractions are not our identity. Because yeah. I have feelings all the time well, that are illicit that I ought not act on. And, we're, and listen, according to the Bible, mm -hmm. uh, heterosexual or homosexual, according to the Bible, those, those temptation thoughts are coming from either the world system, uh -huh. our flesh, or the devil. Sure, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, someone said recently down uh, at Huntington Beach Pier when they were being witnessed to, um, hey, uh, you need Jesus. No, I don't. Yes, you do. You need Jesus. For example, uh, and this happened to have been a young lady, for example, um, if you've ever looked at a man and lusted in your heart for that man, uh -huh. you've committed adultery. Uh -huh. And that young lady said, oh, then I'm okay because I'm, I'm a lesbian. Oh, think, oh. Of, think of that logic. <laughs> okay. That was their excuse. Uh -huh. Oh, that doesn't apply to me. I'm yeah, a lesbian, yeah, yeah, like yeah. free pass. Yeah, yeah, right. But the truth is, if we love, mm -hmm. if we love those that are struggling with, I'm going to say it, temptation, uh, we're going to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. And the church needs to be strong because they're going to be they're going to be needing an anchor to tie their hope to uh, in the in the in the fallout of the Supreme Court decision. There's a temporal aspect to this, and of course, an eternal aspect to this. And if you want to be relevant, and I'm talking to anybody out there, if you really want to be relevant, obviously, mm. eternity never goes out of style. Eternity mm. is Good. the ultimate relevance, and we can do a, a lot of things in the short term that could cause us to go the wrong way in eternity. 
we need to make sure that we're telling the people the truth here in, in this space-time right. continuum about eternity because we're all affected by that. In fact, my friend who was uh, preaching last week on this issue pointed out the long list in 1 Corinthians 6. It's not just homosexuality. That's right. You read that list. That's right. You have coveting in there. That's right. I'm guilty. That's coveting. Right. I'm in there with that That's list. That's right. There's only, Idol worshipers. Yes. There's only one way out of that, Pastor Jack. That's it right. is Jesus. That's there's right. only one way out. That's right. Because we're all, we're all sinners, we're all fallen, and for any of us to say, well, my coveting's okay, or my idolatry's okay, or my homosexuality or adultery or my illicit heterosexuality's okay, that is, that's, that's awesome. from the devil, man. That's not from the Bible. That's not from God. That's exactly right. So on. We, need, we need to tell people that the choices you make now have eternal implications. I'll never forget this. I was in Austin, Texas, just after a very large... Uh, gay uh, parade and gathering. Wait, you, you forgot the word. Pride. Yeah, sorry. A gay pride parade. Correct. Have you ever heard of a heterosexual pride parade? Why don't we start one? I, we, should, <laughs> we, should, we should do one. <laughs> we should do No, it, 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 it just strikes me I that know. people have to be proud about what they do in bed. Why is Ooh, that a... You're so, you're so, why you're, is that supposed to be something that we ought to be celebrating? You're so pulling me off course in a good way. I hope, I hope because, so, because uh, you were really starting to bore me. Because we're getting criticized. We're getting <laughs> no. criticized. We're getting criticized, right, for criticizing. Uh-huh. And I just recently uh, shared in that message again that I did a few weeks ago is when you pull something out from the private mm -hmm. and make it public, mm -hmm. you've got to bear the responsibility that comes with public uh, exposure. Okay. So when you say, we're coming out, we're making it public, and it's legal now, and it's all this, look. You, uh, you know, according to the Supreme Court, you won that battle. Um, just know this, that uh, going public will uh, gather around your ears criticism. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able course. to take it. You, even, even, you this, be exempt. even this crazy Supreme Court admitted that, that people will continue to advocate ideas against same-sex marriage. Well, was it Roberts or... No, no, uh, I'm talking about Kennedy. That's Kennedy's main opinion at the end. At the last par one of the last paragraphs yeah. says that people can still advocate against same-sex marriage. Notice how he didn't say you, must, you can practice against it, though. That well, he did a he, lot of buffoonery. Oh, of course, his, of course he did. Of course he did. Because yeah. uh, what I immediately heard from those that, that are in the know... Um, there in DC, uh, they said, "Here's what he what they decided was actually worse than the decision that they made." So, and they said, mm, "What? Mm. It would have been bad enough for them to say, we've reviewed this. This is our decision. Mm -hmm. Marriage is heterosexual, gay, lesbian, bisexual, trans. Mm. Je, je, okay. Okay. Right." And that's marriage. Uh -huh. They didn't do that. Mm -hmm. They said marriage is not just between a male female. They opened up the door to where you've seen on the news since that the guy in Kentucky wants to marry his horse and he's not laughing about or it. Or the guys in or Utah his, want to marry multi wives. Or the guy in Idaho right. wants to marry his two daughters. Uh -huh. You see, that's you're making that up. Go go look it up. Right. That's what Kennedy and those five answered this nation by not being specific. They mm -hmm. reached into God's uh, toolbox and just scrambled the whole thing up. You know one thing I noticed, Pastor Jack, and sorry to get you totally off track, but I noticed that generally conservatives want to adjust their behavior to fit reality, whereas liberals want to adjust reality to fit their behavior. <laughs> yeah. You notice that? Yeah. Here's, here's well Kennedy, said. who came out of California yeah. by Ronald Reagan. Yeah. He was a replacement for Bork. Yeah. Bork oh. would have been beautiful in Genius, this court because he would have been right on this case appropriately. And here he is trying to change the nature of reality. Yep. It, marriage is not, we don't define marriage. We recognize marriage. Isn't that something? Marriage existed. Arrogance. Yeah, marriage existed prior to governments. Yeah, that's right. Okay, that's prior right. to the church. You got that's three right. institutions. You that's got right. marriage, you got government, then you've got yep. uh, the, uh, the church. Yep. So this existed prior to any of these things, prior to government, it's prior to the church. So we recognize it. We don't define it. We recognize it. So it's really tragic. Yeah. And you're right. Why two then? Yeah. Why two? Exactly. It's arbitrary to put two in Anything there. Anything you want. Right? Yeah, that's so, exactly right. So here, here's the deal. Mm -hmm. um, getting back to that Austin, Texas yeah. thing. A brother that attends a church there uh, told me this personally. Mm -hmm. uh, I had spoken on a Sunday. This, this, this gathering took place earlier that week. And he shared with me, he said... Um, in fact, friends told him, you got to tell Jack what happened. Well, people were coming up on the stage at this gay rally, 
and they were giving testimony of how wonderful gay love is. Mm. And he was listening. He was there to witness. And the guy's from Hawaii. He's as big as an ox. So mm -hmm. he didn't feel intimidated or scared. So, he, But he went there to witness, and he was listening to these declarations. Oh, my man is so wonderful and all this kind of stuff. So he goes up there onto the stage, and he says, I'd like to tell all of you about my man. Mm. And they're going... My man has always been forgiving. He's always been kind to me. In fact, when I, and he went into this story of his, con, of mm. his testimony. Mm. I ran away from him many times, but he went looking for me. He found me. He kept bringing me back. People were clapping. People were clapping. At the end, he said, and I want to tell you the name of my man. Mm. In fact, my man's available for all of you. Mm. They went silent. And he said, my man's Jesus. Wow. And he put down the mic and he ran. <laughs> he ran. But what a line. Uh -huh. My man is Jesus. Uh -huh. Someone may be, listen, you may be out there right now and you may be uh, really kind of upset with what you just heard. But the truth is we love you guys and, and gals. We love you out there. And the truth is this. God wants your life fulfilling. The world tells you one thing. Your flesh tells you one thing. The culture tells you one thing. And God says one thing. God says that he loved you so much that he gave his only son. He's not going to send another one. And you can't do this yourself. That if you would believe on him, that is turn from your sin. Just like Frank and I have turned from our sin. By the way, Frank and I turn from our sin daily. Because Jesus died for us on the cross, yes. But to keep fellowship open, we confess our thoughts to him. Do you know him like that? Jesus died to set you free. You're not free and you know it. You can be free. That's why we're bringing you these programs here at Real Life. Truth in your face, but lovingly, that you can know the freedom and the true liberty that Jesus Christ gives you. Frank, it's great talking to you. We look forward to hearing you at the conference. Jack, and you, um, love it. God great bless being you. here. As Christians, our biblical worldview is being challenged. How should we respond? Learn how you can apply biblical truth to engage our culture for Christ. Get your copy of the Engage California Conference on USB flash drive. It includes the entire conference, eight messages in MP3 audio and MP4 video format. And the cost is just $30. Listen to this list of great speakers. Frank Turek, Jeff Myers, Alan Schleyman, Raphael Cruz, Eric Stanley, Karen England, John Keller, Tim Donnelly, Gina Gleason, and of course, our very own Jack Hibbs. To get your USB copy of the Engage California Conference, go to reallifewithjackhibbs.org. That's reallifewithjackhibbs.org. This entire Engage conference on a USB drive is just $30. Get your USB copy of the Engage California conference today.